quote on. Uh, the short of it is we're a platform. We build mobile websites with social features. And what that means is that people on our communities can talk to one another. They can interact, they can use their chat rooms, they can add themselves as friends, and have private messages, and a whole slew of other things. Um, and that, in a nutshell, is what Mo MoTribe is. Now, if you don't have a mobile website, there are billions of uses that you didn't know you wanted that are there. And if you don't get to them, you're missing out. So our revenue models include brand communities. Um, we have premium publishers. Go to MoTribe.com, sign up, um, get a free account, and then upgrade if they need to. We also then have advertising, um, content sales, and the ad hoc services that I talk about, the main one is games. That's our revenue streams, nice and simple. What MoTribe is doing is not a viral product. We have not gone viral. We will never go viral. Um, I don't even freaking know what viral means. Um, and I have a problem with this because I pitch to brands and I pitch to agencies and I pitch to people and they say, my product needs to go viral. I'd like everyone to put their hands up and I'm going to ask you to put your hands down if you've ever uploaded a piece of content with more than 100,000 views. Okay, so <laughs> one person has had something go relatively Okay, viral does not exist. <laughs> so what we're doing is MoTribe is building a platform. We're not building a product that's going to tip, it's going to go viral. We're building a platform for people to plug into, to have lots of users to launch content onto, to launch networks in, to build communities on top of. We're not building a product that one day will just go viral because that's bullshit. So MoTribe is mobile web. Now, I've been trying really hard to understand why people in South Africa, Africa, the emerging markets, or anywhere for that matter, says to me, but I want an iPhone app. Saying that you only want an iPhone app is like saying you want to avoid 2.4 billion people who've got a cell phone that can get onto the internet. That's the equivalent. That's why MoTribe is mobile web, for that very reason. And it's a very simple thing. And don't get me wrong, if you want to sell a Bentley, make an iPhone app. Or in fact, in South Africa, make a BlackBerry app. But if you want to get to the mass, if you want to get a product to reach a lot of people very quickly, very cheaply, very effectively, get onto the mobile web. It's that. Very simple premise is smartphones are the top of the pyramid. Feature phones are the middle of the pyramid, and SMS only is the bottom mass of the pyramid. Now that mass doesn't have a lot of money, however, the volume of them that exists means that it's worth getting them. Uh, so what MoTribe does is take your community and we optimize from web enabled handsets all the way up through smartphones, and if you really, really want a mobile device like an iPad. The case study. Um, our very biggest client is Guinness in Nigeria. They came to us to build a community in Nigeria. So we ran that campaign and in five months we got 550,000 users to join. That is the mobile web. That is how it works. But the key here is there was buy-in from the bottom straight through to the top. Guinness ran a mobile campaign exclusively. All their TV ads pointed to the mobile platform. All their radio ads, the same thing. Print, SMS, email, everything went to the mobile platform. And because they did that, they probably have 600,000 users on that platform. And I'm sure a million very soon. They, we believe that Guinness Motri portal will have more traffic than Guinness.com in the next few weeks. That's massive. That is how you do mobile. Avoiding the mobile web is absolutely detrimental to your company. So the other thing the Motri does is we own our own communities. Those are some of our, our, our platforms that we own and run. But what we found on Motri, as a the company that owns communities and builds them on mobile, is that niche wins. And the more you exclude people, the more the community grows. As counterintuitive as that seems, it's true. Now, the how about MoTribe is a very interesting story. Um, we had a problem, and the problem was we wanted to roll out a social network on mobile. Um, at this time, we were at Vodacom, we ran a social network for Vodacom, and we didn't know really how to do this. So Vincent built it. From the ground up, in one weekend, Vincent built Emo Friends. And then what we decided to do was roll out another one. So Vincent then had to rebuild it. And at this point we thought, this is a cuck idea. Let's not rebuild it, let's build a platform that allows anyone to build their own one. Wonderful. So we had the idea, we fixed the problem we had, and then we built a demo. The demo is what got us our funding. The demo friends is what got us started. And then we got our VC. From pitch to actually receiving the money took us close to 10 months. We started whether we had the money or not. In fact, we didn't have the money when we started. We just went ahead and left Joburg, moved to Cape Town, launched on the 1st of August, and six weeks later, on the 13th of September, Vincent had built our product and we launched globally um, with the bank. Now, the reason that the other site is out there connect us, our very first client is the US Embassy. And unbelievably, they were our clients before we launched. They emailed us a proposal, said, can you do this? And I said, yes, we can. 
and we could. Um, and it was done. They paid us enough money for us to be profitable in month four, um, and the rest, as they say, is still going. So this is where we go. We have 10 months old, and we're growing by 12,000 users a day. The biggest markets we have, those are 10, India, Nigeria, the US, the UK, Kenya, Ghana, the Philippines, and Australia. So here come the facts. 428 million mobile devices were sold in Q1 of 2011. 19% year on year growth. That is to give you an indication of how the mobile market is growing. Not slowly and not small. Okay? A lot of those were smartphones, but that is not Africa. This is Africa. The outside circle is Africa. Nokia has 66% of the African markets. That is not only in Africa. That is mirrored in almost every emerging market in the world. Um, Apple in Africa has got 1% of the market. That number is mirrored in South Africa. I'll read this one to you. Um, global average of phones per hand is 60.8. In Africa, the average is significantly higher. In South Africa, that is 92% mobile penetration. That means that if there are 100 people here, 92 of you have a phone. That's the way Africa looks. That is what we are dealing with in this country. Everyone has got a cell phone. Here's small facts, the digital frontier. South Africa, we believe, having come from uh, Vodacom, that it's closer to 19 to 25% mobile penetration in this country. It's closer to 9 to 12, 12 million people is the number of people who access the mobile internet in South Africa. The web equivalent of that, however, is closer to five. Why are you building websites? Why are you building websites if almost double the amount of people are on mobile? Build mobile sites first. Build mobile first and build web second. Web is second in this market. Why are we all selling our clients excessively expensive and completely irrelevant websites? The communities are built on mobile with 92% penetration. This comes from Opera Mini's report. And what this says is the top 10 sites in South Africa and Nigeria. Now the reason that Vanguard is red because that is the only Nigerian website in the top 10. That is rivetingly exciting to me. That means there is so much potential for people to launch things, understand the market, because Facebook does not understand Nigeria. Let me be very clear. Facebook does not understand emerging markets at all. In fact, there is no Westerner who's building a website right now who understands what is going on in the emerging market. In Nigeria, March 20th, Opera Mini reports that Nokia controlled all of the top 10 slots in Nigeria. So the next slide says, for that very reason, you should forget iPhone. <laughs> <laughs> this tells me that if you want to build an iPhone app, you're wasting your money and your time. If you're selling your clients an iPhone app, you are wasting their money and time. Because in Africa, we've done research when I was at Vodacom, what we found is phones never get thrown away. Phones never get tossed out, phones never get broken, they get passed down. So the market just grows. So obviously, I think the opportunity is in Africa. The opportunity is to go where no one else is going and do what no one else is doing. And that's what we have here. We have an opportunity to get to a market that is untouched by anyone. It means that we can innovate. The emerging markets as a whole are a very exciting place to be. Um, the reason is no one else knows how to handle them. And I'm not saying I do, because I don't. However, I'm taking the time to learn I'm taking the time to go into townships, to go into the markets that I want to get to, and understand what people need from their cell phones. Who's not doing that? It's Facebook, and Zynga, and Groupon. They don't know what people on the ground want. The emerging markets in the competitive market. Um, I went to New York, I met with Coke's uh, advertising agency, and they just launched an iPhone app. Uh, this was in March. And I said to them, why did you launch an iPhone app? And they said, because that's where our market is. I said, okay. So if your market is 100 million big, and 70 million of those people have an iPhone, what about the other 30 million? The answer verbatim out of the person's mouth was, we don't care about those users. fan freaking fantastic That means that there's opportunity to launch something for the people who are being ignored. In the emerging markets, in the UK, in the US, all these areas, there's a mass of people who don't have iPhones, who can't afford it, who are on minimum wage. Hundreds of millions of people are being ignored in the developed markets purely because they don't have an iPhone. So I'm excited, as you can see. Um, I might be overexcited. So it's time that we understand that mobile is first in Africa. It's time we understand that the iPhone is massive and it will only increasingly get massive. But for now, it isn't yet. It's time we understand that we need to build for mobile and get excited about the prospects of living in Africa. It's time for us to do what we want to do. It's time for us to build the companies, start the business, spend the money in the right places, get the advertisers from America into Africa. Guinness and a company like Guinness is doing that excessively well and they are winning.
They're the first into the market and they are dominating the market because they're willing to commit their budget to Africa. I do have a big bone to pick with agencies. And I do believe that there are a lot of agencies getting a lot wrong when it comes to mobile. A lot of agencies are overcharging, under-delivering, over-promising, and just flailing because they're not willing to ask. We can always all do better. And it's time that we start to do